Eugene and Alice uh, approached me a couple weeks ago and asked, um, well, would it be appropriate? We've never had our children dedicated. Uh, would it be good to dedicate them? I said, it sure would. Amen. And so we want to take some time this morning. And Brother David, you, you did our girls. You did a double one. But I'm not sure I'm going to get a double dedication this morning. So uh, this will be my first to be able to dedicate two children. And uh, so I'm going to have them come in just a moment. But let me just say I appreciate Eugene and Alice and Amen. their desire to honor and please God. I appreciate um, little Eugene. And yeah, that's a big smile. And I appreciate Olivia. And then my girls are enjoying Olivia in Sunday school class, so we hear her name. And Eugene, he just, over the past five month or so, he's just really warmed up to me. It's probably because he has glasses now and sees how good looking at you. <laughs> but we've got to be <laughs> Hey, <laughs> we, we've, we've got to. Just enjoy some good time. So I'm going to ask if Eugene Sr. and Alice would just come on up and bring Olivia and uh, little Eugene. Amen. That might be better if you come to this side. It makes less cumbersome. Amen. Let's give this mom and dad a good hand this morning. I turned on the radio and I was listening to Focus on the Family. 
And so when I listened to folks in the family, they had a, a, a gentleman on there that was from Dave Ramsey. Anyone familiar with Dave Ramsey? And so he's a financial, uh, uh, a Christian financial uh, advisor. His, his works are wonderful. I don't get the chance. And so uh, the, the guy was talking about the importance of showing the children a financial responsibility. The average right now, the average college debt that a, a, a student is out of college with is $37,000. That's the average. And so now they have to lay on them a home, a family, a new job, and $37 worth of debt. And so this guy was saying that it's not the way it should be. It may be the average, it may be the norm for most, but God doesn't want it to be that way. And he was sharing different things. And he was talking about how can we teach our children to be uh, fiscally, fiscally responsible. And he said this. He said, Mom and Dad, you need to live the life before that. You need to show them a work ethic when they're four and five. They need to be working. And they need to see that the very first thing in, 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 in the financial life of mom and dad is, is time. They, they don't need to know how much you're paying, but they need to watch you as you joyfully give your 10% to God. These are arrows this morning that you have. You only get one chance to shoot them. One chance. And, and what are these arrows? They're going to hit the ball. And so we want you, Gene. And Olivia, they hit the mark of what God wants. God has designed them, and God has given them the quality and potential. But Eugene and Alice, it's up to you to develop that quality and potential so that they can develop their want to do. I listened to a, a man not that long ago. He shared with me. He said, my parents had no idea about the value of college. He said, I never went to college because my parents didn't have a value of that. He said, I wish they would have had a value. I'm going to ask you to do something. Look at Rome's. It's beyond your very own. Of what's for the qualities of Eugene and Olivia that God has for them. Look beyond and let it break because God has placed a great responsibility in your life to raise them to serve God. I'll tell you, in my life personally, the greatest job I have is probably by my friend. That I nurture their heart to love and serve God. And that I show and model to them Jesus Christ in everything that I do. That as they role play after me, that they role play <coughs> Jesus Christ. And more than anything, that their soul will know Jesus in So I give you a challenge today. Take it serious. Amen. And I give us as a church the charge. You can argue with me, but I believe this. You've probably heard it said before that it takes a community to raise a child. Amen. I believe that. I'm not looking for the community of Likens to raise my child, but I do look for the community of Maricopa Bible Church Amen. to have a big part in helping my children. Amen. I'll never forget when I was little, there was a lady, her name was Sister Dot. She was a wonderful, wonderful lady. And I'll never forget when I was a little kid, I was like, Bella and Brilli, I wanted to run. And I wanted to have fun. And she would say, ah, Bobby. This is God's house. We don't run in God's house. Mom and Dad weren't always there, but I remember her telling me that. No, she didn't just always get on to me. She had candy for me. She had hugs and she had kisses. And she had stories and she had songs. She had all that. But she helped me in my life with Jesus Christ. Even from my earliest. Megan, I remember your grandma was my, my, my children's church teacher. And she would sing those songs. And so I would hear Jesus loves me as a little boy. I would hear uh, Daniel uh, in the lines. And, and, and she would model I would go down and I would swing on her fence post and I would yell for her. She would bring me cut up potatoes and cut up apples to my sister and I and then she would tell us about Jesus and that was way before I was five years old. I still remember that vaguely. It takes godly people to influence younger children. So I'm going to give a charge to Eugene and Alice this morning but I'm also going to give a charge to our church this morning. It's yours. Hey listen. If these little eyes see you not being faithful, it'll affect them. I want to say, can I say something without getting in trouble? It's amazing how I can look around and see people down on their cell phones from church. Get off your cell phones. Get off your cell phones. Because if I can see it, 
there's little eyes that can see it. Amen. And if it's not important enough to be wholly devoted to God, amen, and you're modeling, how are they ever going to see that it needs to be wholly important? And if you don't come to church faithfully, why will they think they need to come to church faithfully? And if you don't worship, why will, how will they ever learn worship and see the importance of worship? I say that as an encouragement, as a challenge to us. Because little eyes are seeing us. And so, the charge this morning. So, Alice and Eugene, I'm going to charge you. Don't worry. I'm used to little children I, making noise, and they don't. It's okay. It's okay. Don't let that bother you a bit, because it doesn't bother me. But I want to ask you do you, Alice and Eugene, promise in the presence of God, your friends, your family, and this church body, to do your best to instill in your child the values and teachings that will lead him, Eugene, and her, Olivia, to a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Do you promise to pray daily for your child? Do you promise to entrust your child to God's care and God's effort for him and her? To God's service and God's ministry, will you wholly give Eugene and Alice? If so, will you say we do? Now for our church. Miracle Revival Church, do you commit to helping Eugene and Alice? Can I stop here for a moment? I don't want your criticism as a parent. It's a tough job. Sister Gina, I admire you. You've been there. Brother David, I admire you. Brother Greg, Sister Rachel, Brother Josh, Tiffany, I collaborate with you. <laughs> and I admire you. You're a little ahead of me. I need, at times, to know you're praying for me and my children. I need to know you love my children. I need to know that you love them. It's important for me to know my children are loved. Can I just throw something in here? If you ever want to criticize me as a pastor, you criticize me, but never do it in front of my children. Never, ever, ever stagnate their spiritual growth. And don't ever do it to these precious children. Because the Bible talks that we get our for a middle stone to be hung around your neck. Amen. It is a responsibility for each of us to collaborate in raising children to serve God. So I need your help. But Alice and Eugene need your help. And all these other parents, they need your help. They need your prayers. They need your encouragement. They need what worked good for you and what didn't work good for you. Amen. As a body of believers, we need that. We need your prayers. We need a move of the Holy Ghost. I grew up with a move of the Holy Ghost. I don't want to just let my children or these children to grow up with a minimal. I want them to see the Holy Ghost walk and move. And so I got a charge to you this morning. Amen. That you, members of Miracle Revival Church, you promise your time, your resources, your prayers to help these parents raise the Eugene and Alice in such a way that it will bring Eugene and Alice to a personal Eugene and Olivia. I'm sorry, Eugene and Olivia to a personal relationship with Jesus Christ and a desire to serve God. And if you will, Congregation of Miracle Revival Church, will you say? I do. Amen. Would you gather in with me this morning? Amen. Maybe we can move down here and get the whole church to come and we'll pray for you. How would that be? So gather in with you, church. Amen. Let's pray for